Watch Kim Corner, don't you touch that down. <laughs> <laughs>
I forgot, a woman came from a magazine and she didn't know that uh, people of color did this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I feel like <laughs> when I said I was opening my business here, a lot of people gave me, you know, some negative feedback saying, you know, black people aren't going to do that. Why would you put that in Newark? Why would you put it there? You need to put it downtown Jersey City or you need to put it where, you know, rich people or uppity people will go. Mm -hmm. And I said, why? I was like, everyone has the ability to be creative. It doesn't matter where you are, what race, you're, what race you are, it doesn't matter. Everyone has it in them. They just need the opportunity to experience it. So I felt like this was the perfect place to be. It is. It, it was the perfect place. And then, you know, some people also said to me things like, why don't you put it on Halsey Street? It's safer over there. Why don't you put it downtown or like by Prudential or somewhere over there? And I'm like... What does it matter? Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like it had to be there in order to thrive. Mm -hmm. So I like this little space. Yeah, it is a nice, it's a nice spot. It's a nice location. Cause it caught my eye when I was walking by. It caught my eye, and I was like, wow. And that's when I came in here and I talked to you. And I had been doing my show for a while. I kept right. telling you I was getting ready to start my show again. And it was on. And I was like, let me get this thing up and running. So yeah, and I appreciate you coming in to check us out and and to meet with us and talk to us. It's really good to have other people from the community come in and showcase the space so that they know it's here. Because mm -hmm. you know that's also another issue is trying to get people from the community to feel like this is a place where they can come. Because oftentimes they'll walk past and they'll look in. And they don't they're necessarily, not sure. they're mm -hmm. not sure if they're welcome here. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, come in, mm -hmm. look around, come take a class because I really did it for them. Mm -hmm. it, my intent people, was for the community to do it. Have you gotten people from yeah, the community? Yeah, lots of people in? that mm -hmm. live here do come. Um, what I'm working on right now is trying to get people that speak other languages to work here. Okay. Because there's yeah. a large Spanish population mm -hmm. and there's a West African population that's here. Mm -hmm. Some of them can't speak English. So just trying to find different people that can come in and be able to talk to them and let them know that it's here. That's probably right now my biggest target is trying mm -hmm. to advertise to people that may not necessarily speak English because mm -hmm. it's a lot of them here in this mm -hmm. area. It is a lot in this area. It is. And I've been looking on the wall and yes, and this is a nice back. This might have to be my new studio. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I see a lot of different work on your walls and all over. And um, so these are from some of your students from your, your classes? Almost 90%, matter of fact, probably 99% are classes that we've taught. Some of them I've created on my own, like I thought of the image myself. Others, people will call me and they'll say, hey, I want to party, but I want this image specifically. I want to paint this image. And they'll send me a picture and say, can we duplicate this? I want this picture. And so I just teach them how to do it. Okay, now, I noticed you have a setup here today, you said, because you have an event later on today, and mm -hmm. you said a woman passed away. Yeah, so the event that we're having later today is for someone that a family is trying to remember. And so what we do is we make outlines, especially when it's figures, like people, people have a hard time drawing. Other, other people. people, yeah, they said that's so, the hardest thing to draw. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we do the outlines for them. Um, this is going to be painting in the dark. Okay, now what's painting in the dark? So painting in the dark is when we turn all the lights off and we use black light mm -hmm. and we use fluorescent paint. So it glows. The whole picture is glowing. Like the paint is glowing. It's a really fun Oh, wow. Different. What made you come up with that idea? That's good. That's interesting. I saw, I saw an advertisement somewhere else where they had like body painting at a club mm -hmm. and they had like fluorescent paint, body paint mm -hmm. on the people and they were glowing and they were dancing. I was like... <laughs> I wonder if I could put that on paint. <laughs> I mean, put it on canvas. And so I thought about it. I started doing a little research, and I was like, you know what? Fluorescent paint will glow in the black light. So mm -hmm. that's where it came from. Oh, so wow. Like, this is a paint in the dark picture. If you look at it, you can see yeah. it. it's different the way mm -hmm. it looks. But under black light, it, it, glows. it glows. It looks really cool. Wow, that's cool. That's so interesting. interesting. So that's what that, this is going to be tonight. Tonight is going to be a painting. So it's not going to start until the sun goes down. Okay. Okay. Well, the sun is going down early now. Yeah. Anyway. So it, it start, I think it starts at 7 o'clock, 6.30. How long did it take you to get your business up and running? How difficult was it for you to get your business up and running also? For me, um, and a lot of people ask me that question, like, what made you do this and how? Um, I started to brand myself before I got a space. 
So for about a year, I literally would do these classes wherever people would let me do them. Even if I didn't necessarily make any money off of it. I would just do them at community centers, churches. If my friend had something at their house, I would say, hey, let's do a painting party. And I sort of just branded myself to the point where people knew who I was and what I was doing. It helped that I was already an art teacher. Okay. So I had people who knew me in the art world as an, as an art instructor. That helped. And then um, I started doing them routinely at Burger Wallow on Halsey. Okay. So like I think it was like every other Wednesday or Thursday mm -hmm. I would do them there. And so it just got to the point where people knew I was here and mm -hmm. I was consistent. So it was really consistency. So that's how you started to yeah, build up your client that's base. That's how I started to build up a client base. And then a little bit after that, I went down to CEDC. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, listen, I need a space. And I was very specific mm -hmm. about what I wanted. And they helped me find a space. Mm -hmm. They had access to, because I was looking for a space, but I had no luck in securing the space because the the landlords wouldn't answer the phone mm -hmm. or they wanted like some astronomical amount of mm -hmm. money. And so I just called the EDC up. I told mm -hmm. them exactly what I had, what I could afford and where, and where I wanted to be. And thankfully, they were able to help me. Okay, that's good. So how long have you been open now? December 1st will be a year. Okay, so your anniversary is coming up. Yeah, Friday. so I don't know if the <laughs> viewers watching would like to, but January 20th, last year my official grand opening was January like 14th or 15th. Mm -hmm. This year it's going to be on the 20th, so we're going to have like door prizes and I have food being catered. It'll be free painting, music. So that'll be going okay, on Thursday. Okay, January 20th. January What day 20th. is that, you know? It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. I might have to come to there and give me some food. Yeah. And learn how to paint. Get you some food to paint. <laughs> um, there'll be like little gifts I'll be giving out, gift certificates, um, half price registration for classes mm -hmm. if people want to pre-register for a class. And it's for fam it's for children and adults alike. It's for anyone. Yeah. Now, what are the ages? What are the other ages? What's the youngest? To me, if a child can hold a brush, they can paint. Okay. They can be two years old. Their parent can hold them in their lap and give them a brush. It's it's a wonderful way for them to improve fine motor skills, mm -hmm. um, get them exposed to being creative, try not to limit their creativity. A lot of parents will have a kid paint and they'll say, stay in the line. Okay. You know, and, then, and you know what is interesting? You said stay in the line because I had to go to a conference last week and it was called Thinking Out the Box and it was for NJ Sat and you know, all the after school programs. You know, we were there from out throughout the state of New Jersey and some in Connecticut and you know, other places. And they were saying, when you tell kids, you know, you always tell them to paint out in the lines, but then you always say, think out the box. Right. You know. Right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's true. I think we always try to put limits on creativity and what we think is appealing or what we think visually is beautiful but art is really not about mm -hmm. that you know it's about the, and i tell people you can't appreciate something unless you experience it mm -hmm. so give your kids the experience to do it and try not to inhibit them from doing it you know try not to judge them because a lot of parents they don't realize we're so focused on making our kid the best we think mm -hmm. they can be but to our standard mm -hmm. you know so i tell parents just let them and you said you're a teacher. I'm a so teacher. So you work in the North Public I School I taught in school Jersey system. City Public School mm -hmm. for about 12 years as an art teacher. And then I started teaching over at Essex County as a professor. So I teach fine arts over at the college. Oh, okay. So you're in Essex County. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I need to take me some art. I like art. I like I like art. I've just never been good at it. I would definitely paint outside the lines. See, and, and that's the funny thing. People I would come be in, painting outside the lines. They say that I'm not good at it, and I'm like, <laughs> define what is good. Like, what is your definition of good versus bad art? You know, I tell people that all the time. Don't inhibit yourself. Don't limit yourself on what's good versus what's bad. Think about how it makes you feel. That's true, and it's you know, interesting. You told me about um, somebody that was dying from cancer. They had something. Mm -hmm. What was that? His yeah. favorite thing was this red bicycle that he had. And so the mom called me, and I think it might have been his granddaughter. She called and said, we want to do a painting class for him. His birthday's coming up. We just found out he had stage four cancer, and we want to paint his bike. And he had so much fun. He came in, he sat, painted his bike. They all painted the bikes with him. 
And it was just a good time. They got to bond. They got to laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just a fun, a fun thing for all of them, and also something they can remember him by when mm -hmm. he's no longer here. And it was kind of therapeutic too, mm -hmm. probably therapeutic. It's absolutely yeah. therapeutic. Yeah, I think anytime you have a talent, whether you play an instrument, like some people work out. I mean, a lot of times that's just therapeutic for a lot of people. I need to do. Um, Something therapeutic before I do something untherapeutic. <laughs> I think painting is an easy, it's, I think it's one of the easiest ways to be therapeutic mm -hmm. because it doesn't take much skill. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody gave me a guitar and said, all right, we're going to do music therapy, you're going to start playing this guitar, it's probably going to stress me out because mm -hmm. it's just, it takes so much more skill, mm -hmm. like basic skill, to create something. But for painting, I mean, you can literally just throw paint and make something out of it. So it's easier for you to uh, enjoy it. So do a lot of people, do they come, I, I see you have this set up today like this though, but do they come and just kind of like freestyle and just they do. try to paint? On Wednesdays, mm -hmm. Wednesdays is Wind Down Wednesday. They get blank canvas if they want. We always have blank canvas here, but mm -hmm. they can use blank canvas, they can use pre-drawn ones. Mm -hmm. Women laugh, they talk, mm -hmm. mostly women. I get more yeah, women that was, women. that's interesting. I was going to ask you. Yeah. More women. But it's funny because painting and, and the art of fine fine arts like painting is traditionally a masculine it's, thing. Most, and you, most men of the men. Like Michelangelo and, right. and, you know, and Van Gogh and somebody just sold a piece. What was for? It, it was, was the new Michelangelo, it wasn't was it? Leonardo da Vinci's it's, painting of Jesus. It was like $450 million. Who has $450 million? I, I need some of that money. <laughs> <laughs> Donate to kill this corner. <laughs> Somebody needs to go. If you just got four hundred and fifty million laying around and get a payment, you know, I can take some donations here. <laughs> yeah, it was a very, very large amount, but it was traditionally something that men did. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult for a woman to get an apprenticeship to paint. Mm -hmm. We have lots of women who were capable who couldn't get into a you know a school because they were women. So now I find it funny that if you come into one of these classes, it's way more. It's like ninety percent women, and I wonder why. Because men don't feel like it's masculine. They don't think that's something that men. This is what they say. They don't think it's masculine, which I find so funny when I see it because I'm like men. Because most of the great artists traditionally were, were, were men. men. Yeah, so it's like backwards. Yeah, because I have my favorite. I loved, um, I, I did get a chance to go to the Van Gogh Museum. I went to Amsterdam. Oh, that must have been nice. I went to Amsterdam. I've been there a couple of times, but the last time I went, I had a chance to go to the Van Gogh Museum. I stayed in there for three hours, and I learned that he had, his brother, I didn't know his brother was an art dealer, mm -hmm. and his private collection was phenomenal. I stayed in there for three hours because he was an art collector, and he never made more than, I think, $5.00 in his lifetime and some of his paintings have sold for like 40 to 50 million dollars. Mm -hmm. He's never even seen that money. Can imagine. Yeah, now. it's sad. But I love Dolly. Now I want to go to Spain. Oh, you like so I want to go to Spain, painting. yeah, because I want to go to the Salvador Dolly Museum. Kim's Corner does take donations. <laughs> <laughs> he has a weird life too. His yeah. life is very interesting. And I remember him, I was young, but I remember Dolly. He had the little mustache mm -hmm. and he even did a jewelry line and he did some furniture and he did telephones and I just like I like Picasso too, but I love I love Dolly. Dolly yeah, I was, love Dolly. He was very um how can I put it? He sort of broke the mold for mm -hmm. a lot of these. Mm -hmm. You know, he was just so different at that time period. So that's probably why you like him. Mm. Plus, he's more focused on the subconscious and yeah. everything you, is like a puzzle when you look at mm -hmm. it, right? Like you're wondering what was he thinking about when he made it. And I like Frida too. You like Frida Kahlo? Mm -hmm. She was interesting too. Yeah, she had a kind of tragic life too. Very mm -hmm. tragic. She had a tragic life. And yeah. I think it's it's interesting that all of her paintings, all of them were self-portraits. Mm -hmm. Like they were all about herself. So really, mm -hmm. she was practicing art therapy while... Mm -hmm. That was her therapy. Was, yep, it was definitely her therapy. Yeah. And I watched, uh, I saw the self-portrait that um, 
Van Gogh did it himself. It happened to oh, be Oh, with yeah. the bandage on yeah, his face? Yeah, he had the bandage, and it was another one that he did it himself, too. And it was almost kind of like in splotches, like the brushes went like that. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I just found that interesting. He had a lot of Japanese art. He had a lot of Japanese he was art. Influenced. He collected from some of the masters, two other masters of his time period. Yeah, because there was a few of them around when he was alive. They were all doing similar stuff. So, yeah. Do you still teach in the school system, like... Children, or I don't teach young children anymore. I have like five jobs. <laughs> and, and I got six, and I need about 8.5. <laughs> I need like 8.5 jobs now. So I understand. I do the same thing. We all do. You got to hustle now. It's, it's That's crazy. A hustle. I have a, I'm a supervisor of instruction, like an educational supervisor for the Essex Regional Education Commission. Okay. So I do that during the day. I teach at the college on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And then I have this store, and I have a, a nonprofit as well. And the nonprofit is actually bigger than the store. I just don't talk about it as much. It's called Activism Through Art. Oh, okay. And so we do all types of in school residencies in Patterson and Newark. And so you go to the different schools? Yeah, we, mm -hmm. I have a cluster of artists that go in. So we have right now at a school in Patterson, we have an in school residency. We have fine arts, dance, instrumental music, mm -hmm. and vocal music. We did one last year over at Belmont Run mm -hmm. And we have another one starting at Lewis Unos? Lu um The one on Broadway. Yeah. yeah. We have one starting um, in January. And I should know that. I can't even think of the name of it. Louise Mino Marais. It's yeah, right yeah, by yeah. the White Castle. Yeah, right across the street from It used to be Broadway Junior High. I went there. Wow. Yeah, that used to be a junior high school, Broadway Junior High, and I went to Broadway Junior High. Well we have a <laughs> we have a residency starting there in January. On Tuesdays and Thursdays during the day. Louise so, Minos Moran. Got it. Yep. Yeah. So we are out there spreading the art around. So who's going people. to that at, at, at Moran? I have instructors, instructors that I hired that go. Oh, okay. So I don't know if you've heard of Maurice Chestnut. He's a very, very popular tap dancer. Yeah. He works with me yeah, with the nonprofit. Okay. He's doing dance. Well, I don't know if he's going to be teaching dance there, but he's in charge of our dance department for the nonprofit. So mm -hmm. he'll be sending someone out there to do dance. And then we have someone that will find to do the fine arts part, the fine arts portion. So is it going to be there? Or are you just traveling around? Is it going to be at Marin for a while? It's going to be at Marin from January till June. Oh, okay. Um, that's what the school paid for. They wanted that residency program there. But we have the residency programs in schools, and we do all kinds of free stuff. I do a thing every year with um, the Willing Heart on Dr. King. Mm -hmm. We did painting classes there. I do them in Military Park. Like, mm -hmm. I'll just set up and say... I took the kids, but it was a gentleman there this summer because I uh, Maybe worked Whittaker. the summer program. Was it Malik Whitaker? I don't, I don't know what. I don't even know his name, but he had everything set out for the kids right there in Military Park, right by the little restaurant there, uh -huh. by the, in the little merry-go-round, and they just painted, and they had a good time. That's probably Malik. Malik Whitaker is another really, really good artist who does a lot in Newark. Mm -hmm. It was probably him. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was a summer program. The kids liked it. Yep, it's, you know, because it gives some some children never get that exposure. You know, we have to expose our children to more. There's so much on the internet and it's cell cell phones, and they need some outside activities. Mm -hmm. You know, like kitty, you can't use your phone because you're painting. Right. You know, and it's funny because when you when you put them there, the phone disappears. Mm -hmm. You know, once they start painting, the phone sort of just, you know, is secondary. They don't really care about it anymore because it's something that's engaging them. So you're right. They definitely need to be exposed to it. So I learned a lot more things about you and what you do. And um, this is the painter's palette. I always have to remember because it used to be a restaurant. I told her, I was like, what's a restaurant? What's all called the pleasure palette? I hope I don't say the pleasure palette. <laughs> But it's the Painter's Palette, and um, I'll put the information on my show so people can get, you know, in touch with you, and maybe you can get some more students. And maybe Kim's Corner have an event here one day. That's yeah. a good idea. You're more than welcome to. Yeah, that's so a good idea. Get Kim's Corner to yeah. paint. And have a, yeah. You can take me painting outside the lines. <laughs> I'm thinking outside the box. That, that would be a good concept, paint outside the lines. Painting See? outside the lines. See, now think of that. You're going to work on a project with that yeah. painting outside the lines. Painting outside the lines. 
And we can do it in the dark too, because then we can have a glowing. See now, I mean, I'm gonna take it the extra, the extra <laughs> bomb. We're gonna have a glow, paint in the dark outside the lines. Absolutely, you can do it that way too. Well, Celeste, it was such a pleasure. Finally, finally, finally. I know it's been a couple of months. And um, it's such a pleasure finally getting here and looking at your studio and looking at the beautiful artwork. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you for coming. I want to thank everybody for joining Kim's Corner. I'll see you next time.